is your first time seeing my face. Hi, hello, let's be friends please. My name is Kat and I really like musicals, so much so that I talk about them 24-7 over on my main channel. This, what you're watching right now, is actually my second channel, which I usually use for vlogging or complaining. But today we're actually doing something completely different that I've never done before. I guess you could call it a whole new world. God, I could feel the dad joke forming as I was saying it, but I couldn't stop it. I'm too weak. I'm not strong enough to fight against the dad joke force. Today, we're gonna hang out with Broadway's Courtney Rhodes Reed. You guys probably know her best as the original Princess Jasmine in Disney's Aladdin the Musical on Broadway. We chat about everything ranging from Disney princesses to her worst Broadway onstage mishap. I think I got sweaty just hearing the story. Be sure to check out Swingin' with the Mouse, a new album that reimagines Disney classics as jazz renditions. This isn't sponsored or anything, but they do have three Grammy Award nominations and they're hosting a totally free virtual for your consideration event. You can watch the concert stream tomorrow, October 4th at 5 p.m. PDT. I'll be sure to link everything in the description box down below. The album features so many incredible performers like Keith David of Princess and the Frog, Garrett Clayton of NBC's Hairspray Live, and of course, real life Disney princess, Miss Courtney Rhodes Reed. Is it happening? Oh my God. <laughs> finally did it. Well, I just cut out about 20 minutes of us being very technologically unsavvy. It's been a journey. We did it. But oh my god, Courtney, I'm so happy. We're finally here. We're doing it. We're hanging out. This is amazing. Are you in LA right now or where are you? No, I'm in Nashville. Nashville? Oh my god. Are Sorry. you LA based? I am. I'm in LA right now and it's 107. So we just had the AC kick on. 107. I've been in Nashville for like a month now. We were doing like a bunch of stuff with Broadway Princess Party and, and all that, but yeah. How um, fun. I do miss LA though. But how has your quarantine been? What have you been up to? I was in Chicago with my family, which was amazing. Oh, and yeah. then now for like a month and I was I've been here with like the whole Broadway Princess Party like the whole posse like uh, you know Adam Levy Ben Rahala you know Susan Egan obviously because we were like, staying in her home I'm like literally currently in her home right now wait really I I worked with Susan a couple of years ago. That is so funny. What? Doing what? Yeah, when she did Beauty and the Beast again, like two years ago, I was working at that company at the time and Beauty and the Beast was the last show I did with them. And Susan is just the best. I love Susan. She's literally the best. Wait a second. Because when I was in California, we all went to go see it. Funny, oh my God. I actually have not flown at all since. I, so when I was doing a show called Cambodian Rock Band in New York, I got on a plane and immediately went back to LA and it's so crazy because I don't think I mean at that time nobody was wearing masks like it was like not that big of a deal like I mean it was a big deal but like people didn't know what it was going to be right and then I've done a lot of road tripping like I road tripped from Cali to Chicago to Illinois and then I drove down here to Nashville so oh I've been kind of big planes. but it's been really good having the whole posse here was really good we all tested once we arrived we all quarantined together mm -hmm. we're being really safe about it so I mean at least at least you feel like you know your life can like live on as long as you're being like safe and cautious and doing like all the right things what is this room this is my filming room this is like the upstairs loft so I do YouTube full-time now so this is like my little filming area oh my gosh it's so cute thank you thank you so much have you taken up uh any new quarantine hobbies or activities I'm like completely obsessed with home organizing so <gasps> bless my parents. When I went home, I was like, okay, I'm organizing literally everything. I went to my sister's house. I organized everything. I have all the before and after photos. I'm um, like Marie Kondo would be so proud of me. All I'm doing is organizing. Are you a super organizer? I need everything color coordinated. I need it or else I can't get anything done. But when it comes to like physically putting together a room, it takes forever. Like this room, I finally finished right now during quarantine. I started three years ago. It takes me forever to do home stuff. Everything else I'm a freak about. Very organized. Look at your magazines. I have so many things that I want to ask you about your career. You've done so many cool things. And something that I really love is your connection with Disney. I feel like you do so much with Disney, obviously originating Jasmine in Alaska 
Aladdin, you've got Broadway Princess Party, and now you've got Swingin' with the Mouse. What kind of relationship has Disney played in your life? Like, what does Disney mean to you? It's interesting kind of looking back at Disney as an adult and thinking about the impact that it had on me as, as, a, as a child. I do actually talk about this in the Princess Party a little bit. My connection with Jasmine is so like deep rooted. She impacted me in such a huge way because she was like the first ethnic princess. And so for me, looking at all these like beautiful princesses, it made me feel like I could be a princess too. You know, it's like, it's yeah. so weird. It's like you have to wait sometimes to see an example of something that like you look like in order to feel like you can achieve that. So she had a huge impact on me. And so the fact that, you know, the Broadway show ended up timing out, I was able to then play it and it was the right age for me. I actually was able to book it. It's like pretty kind of out of this world. I mean, for so many reasons, but I really pinch myself to think about the fact that I was able to do that and for so long. And I just have so many unbelievable, incredible memories with that show. It will just live with me forever and ever. And I just feel like so lucky. I feel like, like a true life princess. I still feel that connection. And the fact that I get to be connected to her forever is honor that I don't know what I did in a past life to deserve. I really don't. That makes me so unbelievably happy. I'm like a huge, specifically Disney princess nerd because I think there's such a, a weight and responsibility that, you know, in the last 20, 30 years, like every single girl, this is our first role model growing up. This is what we have to emulate. And I think there's such an interesting interesting dichotomy of responsibility of being courageous and adventurous and standing up for what's right but you can also do your hair and wear a pretty dress and they're not mutually exclusive I think that's so cool and important what kind of uh, I guess lessons do you hope young audiences who saw you in Aladdin through the years saw from your performance or took away I love this question I don't really get it that often so like thank you for asking but yeah I think I probably was the most nervous my nieces came to see the show. So I have two nieces. I had two nieces at the time. I have three now. They were young enough that it was like, I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to take it all in, do you know? Mm -hmm. But I remember having this sense of pride going out there and stepping on the stage in this sort of like iconic role going like, you know what? If they are impacted by Jasmine specifically, by the show, but also by Jasmine specifically in such a positive way, I would absolutely be so thrilled if they used her as a role model mm -hmm. because she really is she's 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 strength she's courage she's independence but also at the same time like she shows a lot of love for her father even though they argue she loves her father to the core she just wants him to be happy but she wants her own happiness as well and her own independence and to fight for what she believes in and I think that's so important but yet you know she's still like kind of you know sassy and she's she's beautiful yeah she doesn't put a lot of weight on on that being a true and honest human and that's mm -hmm. those are the things that she falls in love with with Aladdin and so that's why it's like such an instant connection with her because all she does is she comes in contact with these guys who really only care about money and that's the last thing that she cares about and so I think that she's just as such a true strong female lead that like every child should strive to be. As we're talking about growth, you returned back to the role of Jasmine multiple times and you were with the show for a very long time. How do you feel like you've grown returning to the same material at different points in your life? So crazy, that's such a good question. Oh my gosh. Um, every time I, I, it's so weird to talk about yourself in this way, but every time it's better. I discover new things and it's, it's so weird because I did the show for so long on Broadway. And so to think like, what else could I have possibly discovered? But it's almost like sometimes when you're trying to do your homework and you're like, okay, I can't get this. I'm saying homework because I've been like around like Susan's kids. And so they're like always <laughs> homework. And I'm like, that's the first example that I can think of. So when I go back to it and revisit, I had this new appreciation. Um, you know, I had new company. So I had different things to work off of. Um, you know, it was like, I was in a different country feeling more comfortable in with the songs just because you know them so well and they sit better in your voice. It's so funny. I listen to the album, the cast album, and I'm like, oh man, I think I'm better now. They still keep, you know, asking me back. And it's so funny. I retire every time. And my friends are like, oh, you're back. Welcome on back. You've been with it since very early in the Genesis. What was that process like? Yeah, so I auditioned for the reading in 2010. Oh my God. I was doing In the Heights at the time. Another like pinched me. I literally cannot believe I got to be in that show. It like breathe will come up on my iTunes and I'm like, I can't believe I got to do this show. Anyway, I was doing In the Heights at the time. There were like five girls that auditioned for it. And I got to be one of the five. And then 
they kept me. They just kept me forever. And it was so crazy because I did that first reading and they were going to license it to like high schools because the high schools are right. asking for a full version of it. Right. So Adam Jacobs was doing a Lion King national tour at the time. They flew him in and then they didn't have a Jasmine. So they auditioned five girls. They're like, great. Okay. She, she, she'll do it. The reading was such a success that they decided to take it out of town and do it at the Fifth Avenue in, in Seattle in 2011. That's when they had Casey Nicholas sign on as the director. And, and I re-auditioned for him. They kept me. And then we did another out of town trial in 2013. I didn't have to re-audition for that. That was crazy because they had announced that it was coming to Broadway and we really didn't know. Because we just thought, okay, is it coming to Broadway? We don't know if it's coming to Broadway. Like, we don't know if they're going to keep us. And I had been like sort of unofficially told that I would be doing it, but you really just never know. They were having final callbacks on this very specific week. At Disney had asked me to do another internal reading of Hunchback of Notre Dame to play as Merle. Oh, another beautiful show, my God. Stunning show. Oh. And it was just really like a super intimate thing like Alan Menken was there and I mean I say intimate but like Alan Menken and Stephen Schwartz were there so it's like casual you know, it's, yeah it's fine it's whatever just like a little intimate casual hang I was like oh no this is my consolation prize though because they're gonna they're gonna let me down easy and tell me that I didn't book Jasmine and then that day of final callbacks I didn't have to re-audition but they but Disney called me and they were like would you like to be our Jasmine on Broadway Disney said you know we wanted you to hear it from us you've been with the family for so long we wanted to be personal and uh you should probably call your agents now and tell them that you booked it. <laughs> that is such like a like a burst into happy tears moment. I know. And I thought they were calling me about like some scheduling thing for Hunchback of Notre Dame. I was like, that wasn't it at all. Love that so much. So you've been with it, obviously, since the beginning. Five people going in for a reading that like the next decade of your life would be that. How crazy is that? That just goes to show that one, one, one audition can change your life. Did you see or, or feel any kind of um, really big shift? shifts as the show was being developed? Yeah, we had a huge shift from Seattle. No, um, from Toronto to Broadway. Right. A lot of Howard Ashman's original ideas, when he passed away, his ideas um, then sort of vanished. And I think Alan Menken was like, listen, if we're going to do this on Broadway, I want to bring back a lot of like Howard, I want to honor a lot of Howard's um, original ideas. And one of his ideas was that he had these three, Aladdin had these three best friends and they sort of like would break the fourth wall in a way and like chat about kind of comment on the show. Kind of cut a lot of that kind of stuff out. I had, I sang a song called Call Me a Princess, which would writ, a written for the film, which kind of set Jasmine up to be like kind of bratty. So they made the changes. Once they realized that a lot of these things weren't working, Disney made the changes. And then for Broadway, it was like, wow, it was this smash hit. That's so interesting. I, I wouldn't have anticipated that. I think that's such a, a cool lesson, even if you are, you know, Broadway and Disney, if you see a place to improve, do it. I want to ask you some questions about Broadway Princess Party, your concert series. You guys have so many fun guests that you guys have brought on. That's kind of been like a little sprinkle of magic. Rachel Bloom doing Poor Unfortunate Souls as like a mean 13 year old lives rent free in my mind. It's so good. If you could have any dream guest, like literally anyone, who would it be? Such a good question. Who would I have? You know, Lea Salonga hasn't, hasn't, hasn't made an appearance yet. And it's been like kind of a dream of ours to do like the female, female version of Whole New World. And of course I would take the male part, but also like that would be absolutely terrifying because like you should never sing with Leia Salonga because she is the best voice of all time. So it's kind of like, maybe I wouldn't wish for that to happen <laughs> because people would be like, wow, she sounds terrible next to her. She is really the, I think one of the best voices in like history. Speaking of incredible Disney magic, let's talk Swingin' with the Mouse. For those who might not know what it is, give us a little background, give us a little preview. Swingin' with the Mouse is a reimagined album of like some of the lesser known songs from Disney, but like maybe not even lesser known because I get to sing, be a man, you know, from, from Mulan. But it's all like very jazzy and the coolest thing about it, I got to sing like literally in a recording studio with a live band. I've never actually sung with a live band before in a recording studio. It's usually like I sing to a track or usually most vocalists, they sing to tracks. They can sort of vibe off of you even through the booth. You've sort of like feed off of each other in jazz. You know, it's like a lot of things are are just like free with jazz it's not like okay everything is set and all the tempos are like this it's in it's a totally different world than like everything else it's in a whole new world that's the pull quote right there that's the pull quote 
right there. Oh my God. So you guys are under consideration for three Grammy Awards. I have this pulled up. You guys are up for Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album, Best Arrangement, Instrumental, or Acapella, Best Arrangement, Instruments, and Vocals. That is so cool. Yay! So you guys are, are doing press and you're doing for your consideration events during quarantine. How is that going? Unfortunately, I don't get to be a part of the the show that that was recorded in LA at Rockwell because it's like I normally I'm like, of course, you probably know Rockwell like super well. I love Rockwell. But I wasn't there at the time. No. So I couldn't be a part of the show. But like, obviously, I'm still on the album and I'm still like charging on and I really want I really want this album to do well because I think it's phenomenal. I think people will look at it in a totally different way and go like, oh my gosh, I never thought that this song could sound like this. That's so exciting. I I love that too, because I feel like it, even in musical theater or Disney, you have such a, an iconic view of a song. Barbra Streisand singing this or Idina Menzel singing that. It's very easy to fall into a trap of who sounds like them or can you just emulate their performance rather than putting your own spin on something. And I think that this is such a great medium to have that reminder. We've got Instagram questions for you. Also, first off, I think it's worth mentioning when I put up on my story, like, I'm gonna hang out with Courtney Rhodes Reed, who's got a question? 90% of the people who wrote in just said like, she's so kind. She was the first Broadway superstar I ever looked up to. Aladdin was my first Broadway show. So many, like an overwhelming amount had written that in, which I had to tell you that because. So much for saying that because I honestly like, that is like my favorite thing to hear of all time. I'd rather be known as like a kind person than like anything else. So, right? Like, thank you for saying that. That just warms my heart. So MTME15 wants to know, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Oh my gosh, I'm a pop girl like all the way. I'm like, top of charts, obsessed with Ed Sheeran's new song called Diamonds. <laughs> Oh, heard it yet oh my god you're gonna hear it and then it's just gonna be like on repeat it's just so good i'm yeah pop all the way michaela bad asks best ways to handle audition nerves adore you oh my gosh adore you heart emojis i think the best thing is to be like so prepared because when you're prepared you go in you walk in with confidence almost anything can go wrong and i'm still prepared and i still got this also you just kind of bless and release whatever is going to happen in the room is going to happen in the room and they're on your side they're on your team just take a deep breath let it all out walk in there and show them what you got we've got a question from the carl sterling he asks what is your 16 bar cut like if you just gotta whip something out right now what's your go-to i would probably do the ending of Gravity by Sarah Bareilles. Ooh, I love that. I was not anticipating that and I love that. Tried and true, the accompaniment, like it just really just gets me there emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have to work that hard to get there. It's just like all in the music. Let's do a quick little lightning round. Favorite okay. junk food? Butterfinger. What piece of advice would you give your younger self? Believe in myself more. Never doubt my gut. Dream role. You can play anything in any show right now. Now that's like on Broadway, like right now. Oh, no, no, no. Like, oh, I was going to say have a show built around you, like literally any musical you want. Oh gosh. Maybe I'd like write my own show about like a half Vietnamese girl um, because that's what I am. If something was like currently on Broadway, I'd love to play Satine and Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, I would love to see that. Do you have an on stage mishap that sticks with you as like your absolute worst? There was a time when I was sing when I was on as Nina and in, in the Heights mm -hmm. and I started singing the second verse as the first verse and it like terrified me and then I had to like sing the second verse again I'm looking down at the conductor and he's like <laughs> like it's okay just continue because sometimes in those moments you're like do I just stop singing like yeah you know, like what do I do <laughs> Of course, the audience like doesn't know. They don't care. I would say one of my worst things um, in Aladdin was that I came back from a vacation. It was like a two-week vacation. And I'm there's the moment where I'm supposed to throw the cactus at Razul and then escape and then go to the, you know, the rooftop, Aladdin's mm -hmm. rooftop. Well, something had happened in there. Well, there was like an understudy who did a different kind of blocking. I'm not blaming the understudy. It was totally my fault. And it threw me off. And I was literally like, where am I? So I took the cactus. I was like, catch. And I just like threw it downstage somewhere. And Dennis Stowe, who was playing Razul, was like, grab the cactus and like try to make sense of like running over to the cactus to like be like ah <laughs> it was 
so bad. And everyone on stage was dying laughing at me. They were like, Courtney, where is your mind? Like, where are you right now? I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I blanked. It just like threw the cactus down stage. It would have been the worst if it was like thrown completely into the audience. That person in the second row who just ends up with a cactus. So what like, do I do with this? Oh, exactly. oh my God. Oh, panic throwing a cactus might, might kind of take the cake. That's a pretty great story. Oh, geez. Well, you are a delight, Courtney. It has been so much fun sitting down with you and hanging out with you. Where can everybody find you to uh, stalk you and keep up with your new projects? Please stalk me on Instagram. Instagram is my favorite. At Rhodes Reed. R-H-O-D-E-S Reed, my last name. Uh, Rhodes is my middle name. So that's why it's like Courtney Reed was taken when I first joined Instagram. And so I've been Rhodes Reed forever. Um, and it's so funny. Like even my agents will be like, at Rhodes Reed, what are you doing today? <laughs> on Twitter too. And I used to be on Snapchat, but then Instagram just took over my life. You are great. Please come hang out with us whenever you want. Thank you, Queen. You're a delight. And also your organizing skills are on point. I got to get some design tips from you or something because <laughs> got to do it. You're nailing it, girl. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. This was great. <laughs> That was so cool and so much fun. Huge thank you to Courtney for hanging out with us. Definitely check out Swingin' with the Mouse's free virtual concert tomorrow night. I'll link everything in the description box down below. This was the first time that I've ever done an interview like this and it's something that I've been wanting to get into for a really long time. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.